premise is this, that you go out on event one, trapping day one, and you catch a number of animals. Let's make it ten, because that's easy. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you mark each one of those. And then you go out to trapping event two, and this could be the next day, or it could be the next year, if you're trapping a long-lived animal, like a turtle or a whale or, or something. So yeah. the interval between the two events depends on the biology of the species, how quickly it breeds, and how often you're able to resample it. But you go out on the second occasion, in this case, let's say the second day of small mammals, and you catch ten again, because that keeps the math simple. <laughs> and we find that, lo and behold, half of the ones that we recapture, five, have got clip marks on their recaptures. The other half haven't, they're new. And this is the big assumption here. This is the leap of faith. What capture mark recapture says is if these five come from a population of 10, then the other five, well, blue cats, oh gosh. The other five, the five new ones, they also should represent a population of 10. So while on the second day we only actually caught 10, the population size is if these five represent 10 and these five represent 10, 10 and 10 equals 20. Now, why is that an assumption? What's, what could possibly go wrong with that? Keyword is you assume. That's it. There's a lot of assumption going on in here. I like that. Can you if, you do this, if you do this <laughs> with, with, with ping pong balls in a, in a bag, or if you do this with lima beans oh, or something, if you do it in a classroom, then of course all lima beans are equally trappable. You've got, every, you've got an equal chance of taking them out in the second handful as you had in the first. They're not going to avoid being caught or ping pong balls. And it always works really well in, an envir in, a, in a laboratory setting. So if you take a population of anything, you can do it with bits of paper, you mark half and put them back in the bag, take another handful, sure enough you'll get somewhere near the right number. The problem with animals is that of course they're not necessarily equally trackable. The other thing, as we've mentioned, is that between the two events, event one and event two, animals might be born. So there might be animals in the original, in the population by event two that were not there when you started. Animals might die, so they leave the population. They might immigrate and they might emigrate. So there are certain assumptions built into this model. Now, we'll work with this one first, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit about the assumptions as we go on. But this logic was first proposed by a guy well, it was proposed by two guys. It was proposed by Lincoln and Peterson. And poor old Peterson never gets credited with this at all. It's called the Lincoln Index. That's the peril of being the second author on the formative paper. And he summarized this back in the 1940s for small mammal trapping. Really, when ecology was in its infancy, and people were first starting to count animals rather than just make Victorian-style collections. And he <coughs> said that T1 times T2 divided by the number of recaptures equals the size of the population. It's just a formalization of that example. So he said that T1, the number that you catch on the first day, 10, times T2, the number you catch on the second day, 10, so 10 times 10 is 100, divided by the number of recaptures, the number of recaptures here is five, the ones that had marks on the second day, and 100 divided by five is 20, which is the same 20 as we have there. So that's the simplest formulation of capture mark recapture statistics. <laughs>